So along those lines, you talk about diets affecting pig health. Are there some do's and don'ts that we should be thinking about, particularly in that nursery pig when we're formulating diets? Um, I, that part of it is still kind of in its infancy, at least for, from our point. I mean, we specifically looked at dietary fiber um, and, and it was uh, showing that, you know, potentially fiber may be more beneficial than what we originally thought because uh, it does have this anti-nutrient kind of um, connotation around it. Um, so we may want to start looking at increasing dietary fiber uh, in those diets uh, as a means to enhance uh, gut health. And I think more research is coming out about that, uh, especially from the, the Scothorst uh, research station is showing, you know, fiber may be actually beneficial in that nursery. Um, the other thing I think in the, uh, it, it's talked about a lot is dietary protein content uh, in, in those nursery diets and reducing dietary protein. Um, we've looked a little bit at that um, and specifically looking at ways to, um, you know, keep, keep protein the same, but maybe adding something to the diet that reduces its effect. Um, so we specifically look at high protein, but then uh, high fiber. Uh, so give those bugs uh, and something else to, to focus on fermenting instead of the protein. Um, so we had we had some some success with that, but not a lot. Uh, I think uh, more work needs to be done to really understand what's happening with the dietary protein story. Uh, I think it's not just a high and low protein, but there there is more going on, whether that's the type of protein ingredient being used or the digestibility of the, the ingredient, I think we really need to start looking more and more into.